Welcome back to track two of DamFest Europe. Here is your track two chair, Maddie Whalen solomon Hello everyone, welcome back to track two. It's a pleasure to be here and introduce our next session, uh, which I'm very excited about because it's about one of my favorite subjects. The title of this session is Dam and a Dram, Local Yet Global, Whiskey from Scotland to the Rest of the World. Um, how would you not want to see that? But if you're looking for the People's Postcode Lottery, you need to go back to the agenda and uh, get back on track one. And also I want to remind everyone to please feel free to send some questions in the Q&A or the comment section on the right-hand side of the page. So thank you very much. And without further ado, it is uh, very exciting for me to introduce Megan De Lamont, Digital Content Analyst at Edrington. Welcome. Hello, thank you, Maddie. Thank you for that lovely introduction. And um, so as Maddie said, I'm Megan. I work for a company called Edrington and I work for the internal digital marketing agency called Studio. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any drams to share around today. I was just saying that to Maddie earlier. It's a bit of a shame, but we both agreed it's probably a bit too early anyway. Um, so today in my presentation, um, I wanna tell you a little bit about Edrington as a company. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about who's involved in the full content um, life cycle of our digital assets, as well as product information. I want to look at the anatomy of our dam. So looking at the taxonomy that we work on, all the meta properties that we use. Um, there are a lot that are specific to whiskey and spirits. So I hope you find that interesting. And the last thing I want to touch on is our PIM integration. So um, we have just this year launched a global PIM, product information management system. Um, and I just want to explore the relationship with, between the DAM um, and other source platforms with our PIM integration. And so about Edrington, we were founded in Scotland in 1861. And now our brands are found all across the world. Um, so um, some of the, you know, the world's uh, most premium spirits brands um, I hope you will have seen some of our portfolio. Um, it's a portfolio that uh, is a, a range to be proud of. Um, so what I love about working with Edrington is that everything is underpinned by some really great values, values of giving, respect, integrity, and excellence. Um, and we really are encouraged as Edrington employees to um, use those values in, in every aspect of our work. Um, so I'm going to show you just a little introductory video to Edrington in a second, but I just wanted to start uh, with sort of the backdrop of what's been happening over the past couple of years. Um, COVID-19 has obviously had an impact on the spirits industry as well as a lot of other industries. Uh, at one point in 2020, um, every bar across the, the, the world was actually shut, um, which obviously has highlighted a big change in consumer, um, consumer behaviors, how they find products and how they search for products and also how we deliver them. And um, we've also faced some challenges uh, with Brexit, um, navigating that and also US tariff import taxes. Um, but I just wanted to say that the great thing about all of this is it's really, uh, it's really shined a light on amplifying our e-commerce strategy um, to uh, address those changing consumer needs. Um, so the, the dam has really, um, for me, taken on a new life in, in this kind of era moving forward. And with the implementation of the PIM, I'm gonna explore how, how the, the, the dam has had to change to um, so support that new project as well. So it's just a short video for you.
So in that video, you can see we're more than just a spirits brand. Um, we, of course, have a portfolio to be proud of, um, but I think you'll see during that video um, that our business model is quite unique uh, to our industry. Um, so our company was founded over 100 years ago um, with William Robertson. His granddaughters actually formed a charitable trust to own the business, and today Edrington's principal shareholder continues to be the Robertson Trust. Um, so I just wanted to introduce our company. Um, you will have seen all of our gorgeous products um, displayed in that video as well. So moving on then to who was involved at Edrington in our digital asset management. Um, it's I think we often see dam management as quite a solitary um, sort of role, but um, what I've come to learn through uh, the PIM integration project is actually you need to, to really reach out to different areas of your business to find out where you can, um, where you can enhance and streamline um, processes as well as um, integrate systems. So firstly, you just want to look at the internal agency studios structure. Um, so this is the team that I'm part of. You can see we've got all the way up from the business director um, we've got head of technology and as well as brand marketing that work with us and our creative stream. So we've got a lot of talented people in our creative stream and also the digital optimization um, team, which is where I sit um, alongside um, some of the optimization speci specialists, so looking at analytics of our social marketing and looking at email um, and, of course, digital asset management kind of comes under that umbrella. So then looking at the wider picture, we have the core studio team. Um, so myself and uh, two of my colleagues are sort of the core group that are looking after digital asset management for the full company and um, the global markets. We work quite closely with obviously the DAM and PIM customer success managers, so our service providers. We also work closely with the global digital tech team at the, the Glasgow head office as well as the global brand managers. And by extension, any external agencies that the global BMs are working with as well. And um, we also have recent ties into the global master team, master data team, and they actually work at our bottling plant. So this is the team that's really creating all of the, the technical records in our SAP system um, that hold all of the information that we need for all of our products. And um, so things like size, weight, how it's packaged, what markets the SKU is available to sell in. Um, and then by extension, you can see the that's actually quite far reaching and um, uh, working with the global teams, but also all of their marketing teams across the globe, accommodating the different needs um, and accommodating the different assets that need to be pushed out to external agencies and working with the global, global digital tech to make sure that the platforms we're using and our processes are really in line with that um, global digital tech stack um, as well, as I mentioned, the global master team looking at um, the, the SAP integrations with our new PIM system and um, understanding things like the packaging technology team. And um, really all this to say that no dam is an island. Um, you may think that if you are working solely as the digital asset manager in your role, um, that it, it can be sort of a siloed role. But I think through this PIM integration project, what I've really found is so much value in reaching out and looking at where the DEM and PIM could really help um, lots of various business areas across our, our global business. So moving on then to the anatomy of our DEM, what does it look like? Um, so our taxonomy is based on a Linnaeus style hierarchy, um, which means that we allow uh, users to search for assets using filtering, of course, text search, um, but it differs to that sort of folder within a folder structure that a lot of our colleagues are used to um, for their own private files and sometimes for sharing um, other business documents. So I find that that's um, maybe the most, uh, the, the challenging thing for adoption for a lot of DAM systems is really, um, educating people on why this system 
works better than the folder within a folder nested structure. Um, it allows people to, to really find what they're looking for through their own eyes. And I feel like as a digital asset manager, I need to allow the system to be flexible in terms of keywords. You know, if I was an end user and I'm out in market in Africa, what kind of words am I going to use to try and find a sell sheet for a particular SKU that we sell there? Um, so I, I feel like there's... Um, yeah, a real advantage for a Linnaeus style structure, but it of course does come with, with some challenges. Um, but as this quote from uh, Charis McGowan says, if each employee allocates files according to their individual preference, the possibility of efficient and constructive collaboration with colleagues and peers is eliminated. Um, so that is to say, there does need to be some sort of global governance and we need to ensure that we are adhering to the categories, file types, live and archive statuses um, and any additional categories that come up. And we also adhere to a naming convention and we also capture some metadata that's unique to spirits. So it's something that I like to call, you know, the more romantic elements um, of digital asset management when it comes to whiskey is we think we capture things like tasting notes, the color of the product, and of course, how long it's been aged. You can see here just some interesting um, pictures that kind of highlight, I think, those those elements, those characteristics when we're looking at creation of content uh, within the studio as well as external agencies. What we really want to highlight about our, our content because um, our products really are spectacular. They're beautiful. We want to capture the aroma, the palette, the finish. Um, so it's a great subject matter um to to be digital asset managing um for a spirits company we also um capture metadata and we make this available uh or upon download alongside the actual assets that our users are pulling so we ensure that's exportable and we also allow for automatic derivative creation within the system so that's really handy when we're looking at uploading larger files that might be um, optimized for print. So, you know, in CMYK, uh, 300 DPI, but then often what we'll need is a, a subset of um, the various derivatives that we can deliver for online and digital purposes as well. We have the option to mark assets suitable for PIM, and this is a change that we've had to add into the DAM sort of retroactively um, once we integrated with the PIM. Um, so the, the hard and fast rule for us is if it's not something that the end consumer needs to see, so if it's um, a business plan, for example, that asset wouldn't be suitable for the DAM, uh, for the PIM, sorry, but anything that um, is related to showing off our products. So all our, our brand videos, um, sometimes there are bespoke product videos, as well as all of the, um, the wonderful photography that we have as well. We have a regional filter. Um, we have space to capture copyright data. Um, and we also can auto populate metadata pulled from the source file. So things like what camera was this shot on? Uh, what's the date of creation? That sort of thing. So this is a, just a bird's eye view really of what um, an asset in our system might look like. There are plenty of areas uh, for en enhanced content to, to come into the system, such as the, the long description. And we work with the global brand teams to understand the context of the assets that are coming in before approval and just making sure that the description um, really sort of helps people find what they're looking for because that's what it's about at the end of the day. And um, we have things like system generated ID so that we can uniquely track um, and also related assets, which is a really nice function. Um, if you were looking for this specific asset, you might also be looking for it on a white background. So. Um, recognizing those user experience gaps that we can fill by adding extra functionality. So the current status of our DAM, uh, we're just over 1.2 terabytes at the moment. Um, and you can see here, the majority of that is imagery for um, our wide list of brands. So our brands are the global and we also have some America's specific brands as well. Um, so this is broken up 
the majority of people are light users. So we have, of course, all of our Edrington staff. We also manage external agencies, distributors that need access to assets to sell and also joint ventures. Um, and then we have 50 or so brand content managers and super admin. So that's two or three for each brand um, and also super admin like myself and IT to, to really help people out and have visibility of all the assets that are coming through. So I'd like to just move on to our PIM integration project, which I'm very excited about. Um, while we're implementing Global PIM, uh, the, the headline here is really to become the best in liquids on e-commerce channels. That's our vision. Um, as I said before, out of the challenges we faced in 2020, um, things have been highlighted due to COVID, Brexit and the US tariffs. And we're looking at streamlining ways of working. This is a large piece of um, why the PIM was recommended for the company by going out to markets. We found they wanted to reduce the time to market. So from that point of a new SKU going live to assets being creative, to um, packaging all of that information up and distributing to their distributors and sellers online. And looking at data completeness, so when you are working in market and you're um, sharing information, sometimes people are left out of email chains, and sometimes you're not sure if you've got the, the most up-to-date information. So looking at that data completeness in a source sort of system for everyone to use, and again, that is um, really promotes data reusability. Uh, we can transform data in a way we haven't been able to before. Um, it provides global governance. So just like our dam, um, we can ensure that everything that's coming in is up to quality, is up to speed. And again, streamlining processes um, such as syndication of, of assets. And so yes, the vision is to create a single source for all product data and assets meeting our international market needs and empowering the markets as well. I'll touch on that a little bit later. So what we're looking for in terms of measurables is delivering enhanced product experiences. So this is really for our end consumers. Um, we want to increase discoverability and ultimately conversion. We also want to build strong trade relationships and effective partners with customers. Um, we want to be a company that is easy to work with. Distributors love working with us because we've got all of our content together and it's easily syndicated to them. Accelerating the speed to market, launch faster in markets, and that will result in longer periods of sales. And also to increase the brand loyalty and what's called stickiness. So increasing um, our consumers' willingness to advocate on our behalf um, because they've had a great experience through buying our product and are happy um, with the product that was delivered. So I want to take you through a process map that touches on the integration and output of all of the source um, systems that are feeding information into the PIM, how we then transform that and push it back out again. So at the, uh, one of the sources is our DAM as well as our SAP system. Um, also a nod here to the NPD, the new product development system. So that will become before the assets are created for the new um, SKU and also before the technical information is input into SAP. But once it is, uh, from the dam, we're pushing product images, lifestyle images, campaign images, as well as brand videos and the like. And from SAP, we're really pushing all of that technical content that distributors need, so SKU codes, product name and the automated SAP fields like weight, size, packaging, and all that technical and logistic info. So we've been able to achieve this by um, integrating this information in these systems through an API. So an API is basically a piece of programming that allows one digital technology system to speak to another. And we've actually uh, had to build um, an API um, in-house, which is really great because it's kind of custom to our needs in terms of pushing um, the assets that we want from, from the dam into the PIM. So once that information is married up within the system and we use the SKU code as a unique identifier, um, both in the SAP system and we've also started to map that SKU code visually to all of the assets that already exist in our dam. Um, it comes into the system and that will kick off the workflows in our PIM. 
So firstly, um, marketing and content enrichment. This is done with the studio team alongside the global brand managers. At that point, we empower the markets by pushing this content out to them and saying, hey, we've got this new SKU, um, it's available in your market. Let us know if you want any content translations or localizations. So here we're talking about literal language translation, but we're also looking at the fact that um, selling in one country is perhaps not the same in another. We might use a different sort of language. Um, so after that comes back to global and studio and is reviewed it gets signed off and then that product information is ready to be syndicated and the way we can do this is by creating catalogs so for download or just for view and in the PIM system we can create a um, public link that we can push content to and the important part here being the content that we deem is necessary for that particular end user so if a distributor just needs the SKU code and the front um, front shot of the bottle, then we can provide a list of those for them to download and then um, upload into their own systems. The other way we can push information out is through channels. Um, so when we push content out through channels, uh, channels are set up to meet the specific requirements of the market. And that's where that real hyper-localization can come in. Um, so within a readiness report, which allows us to check all of the information that's being syndicated uh, before we push it out, we're allowed to um, map up all of the content that we currently have in the PIM with any requests that the end distributor will have. So um, for example, if there's their system requires product name, but that actually maps to a field in our system called SAP product name, we can map that up and it's packaged in the way that they've requested, basically in a templated style. And um, so to make that syndication to their own end platform that they'll be selling on that much easier. So there are a few ways that we can actually push this content out. Um, if the end platform actually allows for an API connection, we can set them up and that's the most you know, streamlined kind of way to go. And we ha also have some sort of um, smaller retailers and distributors that aren't um, able to offer an API at the moment. So we can push through um, an FTP or we can also just offer a download of information. And what that will do is package up any relevant assets and any relevant um, Excel spreadsheets containing all of that information that we've got in the PIM from SAP as well. So that's really the life cycle. And this is the project I've been working on for about a year now. And it's really exciting. And it's really forced me to, to see DAM in a different way, which kind of comes on to my last few points, um, my top tips, if you will. So don't be afraid to flex your DAM. I wrote an article about this recently on LinkedIn. I think we can really see DAM as being quite static, quite structured. Um, but when you bend it the right way, it can really show um, great flexibility and can serve a lot of business needs that you, you might not have sort of identified um, previously. In saying that, the taxonomy needs to be your solid foundation. So always be true to your taxonomy. Um, you can amend it if the business need is there, but always take into consideration the far reaching um, the far reaching um, impacts that it may have in the end and, and go with a majority rather than a minority. Um, and yeah, talk to your colleagues in different business units. As I said before, no dam is an island and you'll find out things that you didn't know were issues for different business units and you'll start to come up with creative um, solutions for how you can really push your dam to, to serve not only just your marketeers, but also fill some gaps that you see in other areas within, within um, your entire organization. So that was me for today. Um, happy to take any questions. I, I hope you found that um, informative, enjoyable. Again, sorry that there are no drums to go around, but I'm sure one day in person we can do that. Yay, thank you. Thank you for a fantastic presentation. Thanks, um, Maddie. It, yeah, well, it's gotten me uh, thirsty. 
Uh, that's I know. For sure. <laughs> I have a couple of questions that have come in and a couple of comments. One of them, uh, one of the first comments was uh, a real uh, recognition of seeing the orchestration and the integrations from a master data management point of view. Yeah, absolutely. Really impressive. Um, mm -hmm. So not only is it, it, it not, DAM is not an island, it's also very much a part of the ecosystem, absolutely. which enriches it. Uh, and you And you presented that beautifully. Fantastic. Um, I have a question here. Thank you for sharing the beautiful imagery. Those oh, were beauty yes. shots for sure. Uh, <laughs> but the question continues and asks, do you also create, produce, and distribute more standard e-com imagery like a GS1, uh, you know, yes. standard pack shot? Do you also hold those yes. in the dam? Absolutely. And that is really important. And um, I think part of our PIM research and implementation is looking at, you know, what also what are competitors offering up, like in terms of those static images that serve more functional purposes. We totally understand that um, distributors are probably just interested in that bottle shot on a plain white background. It's a crop of 2000 by 2000. So yes, we definitely have all of that imagery as well. I just wanted to show you some of those gorgeous shots that we've had um, created in studio. A follow-up question from that too is also, um, have you explored mobile hero imagery? No, not so much. And um, so I think that's kind of part of the next phase of our PIM is really harnessing the PIM to create assets that are um, more, uh, more flexible and and um, optimized for for different formats so yes definitely on my radar yeah great great um another question here said um have you any correspondence between dam and pim in terms of product workspace product workspace i'm unsure what that refers to not to that either, but I think okay. you, you, you began to illustrate how it actually is integrated with the workflow. Right. Right. Okay. With your... Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so I think what they might be looking at here is maybe the interface um, of DAM within the PIM. Um, so, so no, we don't have that kind of visibility um, in terms of the interface of the DAM within PIM. Everything is pushed um, through the API. Um, mm. So what we see in the DAM is any field that needs to be filled out mandatory for it to be syndicated to PIM will then be pushed in. And also those fields in that metadata actually sit within the PIM against the asset. So um, it's it's not so much a duplication, but you can see all the content that would be uh, relevant within the PIM as well as uh, within the DAM as well. Very nice, very impressive. I have another question. Sure. Do you plan to pass back some or any read-only product data into the DAM to enrich the asset level metadata, search experience and relationships between the assets at all? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so our API is currently one way, but I think once we get up and running with the PIM, looking at those analytics in how how many of the assets are actually being used, which assets are most popular, um, mm -hmm. I think having that sort of um, information will be really great to inform even the content creation piece. Um, so yeah, that is a great prompt to, to actually have um, some information streaming back into the dam that we can see in both systems for sure. Well, you've painted a very interesting picture. And of course, everyone uh, is now going, you've, you've just laid the groundwork for all of these things that they're asking about. Uh, so right. well, well done on that on such a short time. And I think we're out of time now. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you. It was a real pleasure. Let's see what comes up next. Uh, you can stay here on track two. Uh, and you can hear Cloudinary discuss their intelligent dam automation. Or you can always go to track one and learn more about Widens, uh, how they drive efficiency across content operations. Thank you for a wonderful presentation. Um, and we'll see you back here in about five minutes. See you Thank later. You. Thanks, everyone.